Hi everyone, I just wanted to throw together a quick little video, video around terminology because I see a lot of this and I talk to a lot of people around terminology all the time. So I hear a lot of people saying, you know, family daycare scheme and all that sort of stuff. You are officially, you are technically an approved education and care service. That's that's your title. You are a family daycare is your service type. You are an approved, uh, an approved education and care service. So rather than scheme, if you look at the definitions in the, um, in the legislation, in the Act and in the, in the regulations, you are approved under the education and care legislation. So if you look at the definitions in that, that tells you exactly what the service is which if you are providing education and care services to children in a family daycare setting, then you are an approved service under the education and care legislation, okay? So service is one thing. Another thing I hear out in the sector is um, a, a field supervisor or something along those lines. Now, depending on what delegation has been given to that role, it might be a field supervisor, I don't know. But if we look at our legislation, the education and care legislation, then there are obligations for the coordinator to, to be working with educators in order to meet um, any compliance needs or the regulations. So that, that is the coordinator's job. So a field supervisor, because it holds a definition under the legislation, I would stick with using a coordinator. And in most cases where I have spoken to people who have changed that language to field supervisor, they really are talking about the coordinator. So I can't answer it for everybody without knowing all of your circumstances, but generally speaking. So stick with the coordinator. Our legislation uses that term. It is a de there is an actual definition under that term. Our framework talks about that term. So if when you're, you're using the word field, su field supervisor, we're not really sure of who that is under our res roles and responsibilities and those sorts of things. But we know who you're talking about when you say a coordinator. So make sure again that your language, your terminology is consistent across the service. Because if you ring me and say, oh, my field supervisor is doing, I would need to ask a whole range of questions around what authority they have, what their contract responsibilities are. There's a whole range of investigating that we need to go through in order to determine what their roles and responsibilities are. Whereas if you say I've employed a coordinator, I don't need to go through that. We know, everybody knows the roles and responsibilities of a coordinator in family daycare. So stick to the right terminology. Um, now, um, education and care services or child care services or whatever it is. This can be a really confusing one. So the educator working from home is contracted to an educate and approved education and care service to provide an education and care program. That's it. So the educators are not service providers. They are, in our language, they are educators. They are providing a service, yes, but they are providing the service on the service's behalf. So it is the service that is the service. The educator is providing an education and care program, not an education and care service. That is the service provider's job, the approved provider's job, sorry. So that, that's how that, that works. So educators, by definition, work from their own home or work from a venue. So the definition will tell you exactly what that is. Educator assistants are exactly the same. An educator assistant can only be work, can only be used for four hours under certain circumstances, da, da, da. So that's your educator assistant. There are definitions to tell you what that person can and cannot do. So stick with the same terminology all the time. So that's one of the confusing things. So um, yeah, I, and I also see um, manager and, and that, look, you can have a manager, of course, you can have a manager. Many businesses have managers, but what is that responsibility of the manager? And if that manager is a business manager, then where do they sit? Are they a nominated supervisor? If they are a nominated supervisor, then they fall back into meeting those responsibilities in the legislation. So um, it really does depend. Be really mindful about how all your terminology works so that everybody in your service knows what. And look, I would even go as far as saying, um, and I see this sometimes when I speak, particularly, oh, yeah, particularly with educators, 
Um, an attendance record is an attendance record is an attendance record is an attendance record. So an attendance record has what we call prescribed information. So it has to have the date, the time, the, the time, the, the, the date, the child's name, the time they got there, who signed them in, um, all that. So an attendance record has prescribed information. So if you're record, referring to that as, say, like a, a sign-in sheet, then you're not referring to this. So if everybody refers to an attendance record, not a signing sheet when it comes to signing children in and out of care, an attendance record, regardless of whether that's soft copy or hard copy or whatever that is, attendance record has to have a certain amount and a certain a specific information in there in order to be compliant. So if you're a coordinator speaking with an educator, you're both, you're saying, where is your attendance record? I want to see your attendance record or I'm according to your attendance record or attendance record, attendance record. So a sign in and out sheet would be used for something very different, although they are serving a similar purpose, yes, but an attendance record has prescribed information under the legislation attached to it. So therefore, it just makes life really easy if everybody uses the same terminology. And, that, and that's the same with an incident report. An incident report is an incident report is an incident report is an incident report. So an incident report has to has also that specific and prescribed information that you need to attach to it. So um, an incident report is an incident report. So if we get our terminology right and we start making sure that if somebody in your service or somebody you're working with um, uses the wrong terminology, then absolutely, you know, that's part of professional development to give them the right, oh, that's not what we call it. Oh, you're talking about the attendance record. Yes, the attendance record. So you're looking for the attendance record. Attendance record is a, yep, yep, yep. So next time that person says, I want the attendance record or where is the attendance record? Or so that language is now becoming very, very shared. Now, they're really simple um, examples that I've given you, but trust me, this is stuff that I come across every day. So have a little listen about your terminology. I had an issue um, with that I helped a service get through the other day and when I looked at their policies that the policies went to the educator so they stood the educator down and the educate the policies that the educator was working on I can see where the educator got confused I could see why the educator put the service providers back up against the wall kind of thing because it wasn't their their documentation wasn't really clear like their language wasn't really clear in one policy they referred to a document and then in another policy they referred to that document but different names of that document. So say the title was, I don't know, The Educator's Guide. In the other one, in the second policy, it, it referred to it as um, uh, The Educator's Book or something, something, whatever it was, I can't remember now. But, but that terminology consistent across your documentation also is vital to having clear understandings in your service and shared understandings, okay? So just wanted to throw that quickly together for you. Um, we'll be in touch soon. See ya, bye.